So I kind of did this video out of the blue on the fly, so I didn't hook a mic up or anything. Hopefully the empty room is not too echoey. But I just want to talk about why you can understand so much, why you have such a big vocabulary, but you can't speak fluently or with fluidity. And instead of doing something super scientific, let's just use our common sense. This is going to be completely opinionated, but I'm going to use some common sense that I think will make sense for you. So let's break down what makes us sound fluent, what's, what makes us speak with fluidity. And let's even talk about how we make fun of that. Babies, cavemen, what are they missing? They say things like, I, George, swing, tree. There's no connecting words. They have vocabulary, right? A caveman has vocabulary. He can say the names of foods. He can tell you he swings from a tree, but he can't say anything in between that. He can't say, I use this rope to swing from a tree, or I tie this rope around the tree so that I can swing. I use this rope in this way in order for me to swing well, right? So those connectors are missing. Same thing for a baby. A baby can say, I hungry, I food, want food. There's, there's words and there's nothing in between. That is the difference between an adult and a baby. Sometimes I'm a baby too, but that's the difference between someone that cannot communicate themselves well and someone that can communicate themselves well. And so, what do we need to do? We need to practice those connectors. We need to practice speaking. If you ever did a presentation in school, college, for your work, whatever, you did not just go up there and just do it on the fly. And if you did, you probably realized I shouldn't do that anymore because it is actually hard to speak about things that you have never practiced before. And for some reason, even though people know that in their native language, they think that they will just listen to other people speak in a second language. They will just, I don't know, passively absorb stuff. And when it's time to talk, they'll just be speaking like a machine gun. It doesn't work like that, bro. Speaking is a skill. It takes practice. Even the best speakers in native languages, they practice their own speeches in English or in their language so that it can sound good. If I have a speech to deliver, if I have a job interview, I don't just walk in there. I want to be well prepared for whatever might come up. That's the difference between someone that can usually speak well and someone that can't. So you need to take that concept and apply it to language learning. You probably don't need to add much more vocabulary than you already have. Unless you're a super beginner, it's good to learn new words. But people that are low level intermediates, high intermediates, you probably have a decently broad vocabulary. You might not know a bunch of little stuff here and there, but vocabulary is not what makes us sound fluent, right? I could throw out a bunch of big words right now and even that, we would make fun of that. We make fun of people that use a bunch of big words and can't communicate themselves. Well, if I say, oh, well, the propensity of this is based on the anonymity of blah, 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 blah. It's like, bro, what are you talking about? Use regular words. We're not in an academic setting, right? So it's not a, a, a super big vocabulary that makes you sound fluent either. That's cool if you have a big vocabulary. I have a colorful vocabulary in English and I do use it. Um, in the right situations. But on a normal day, I talk like this. This is how I talk and I talk fluently because I know how to connect my sentences to express the ideas that I want to express to my audience, right? So in summation, if you wanna ignore everything I just said, what you need to do is stop trying to learn new words and perfect the things that you already know. Like I said in a previous video, and a bunch of my previous videos, you should be able to describe things in your house. What is a carpet? What is a carpet for? What is a curtain? What is a curtain for? How do you let down a curtain? If you can't say let down a curtain, maybe that's something you wanna learn. Because all of these things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, you can apply those to other things. If you can say, I'm gonna use English. If you can say, I got out of my car, you can also say I got out of my bed. 
I got out of whatever, I got out of this, I got out of this. If you can say, I stood up from a chair, then you can say, I stood up from my bed, I stood up from this, I stood up from this. So most of the time, those basic, basic constructions, you can apply them to 2,000 different things. Um, that's, base, that's essentially what a kid does. They learn something and they start applying it to everything. Did you learn a new structure? You start applying it to everything. You don't need to learn a thousand new words today or a thousand new structures today. You need to practice the structures that you already know. If you have trouble saying, I went, if you have trouble saying, I did, you don't need to learn 20 new vocabulary words today. You need to work on saying, I went to the store. I went to the gym. I did this yesterday. I used to do this all the time. Those, those things should be first. A little kid in whatever language can probably tell you a story. It might be the worst story you've ever heard, but they'll say, oh, I went here and then, and then my mom picked me up and then, and then she took me here and we did this, we did this. And that's, kids develop their language like that. They're just talking all day, bro. They're just telling you everything they did. That's what you need to do. So I hope this helped you in some capacity. If it didn't, don't care. Have a nice one. Let me know if y'all need anything. I will gladly make another video about whatever topic. <laughs>